Hello and welcome back to another seasonal wrap up. This time I'm going to be talking about all the books I read in summer. I read a total of seven books and honestly they were all really good except for one book which I hated passionately but the rest of them were four and five stars so if you're looking for a good recommendation I'm here for you. I just want to say unfortunately I only own the physical copy of one book because I was living in Banff National Park for the past four months so I was only reading off my Kobo. If you are interested I just made a playlist for all my Banff adventures so you're gonna have to deal with the digital pop-ups of these book covers. I'm sorry. The first book I read was Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. This was the third book that I read in the series and depending on what order you read it in it's either gonna be your third or your fourth book that you read. This book I think is gonna be what I use to reference amazing character development. Because let me tell you, Aelin went from a depressed, hopeless, very sad person to like the most powerful and confident person you've ever met by the end of this book. And it was done so well. And I loved, loved this installment of the series. Aelin has about four love interests. I do believe that by the end of this book, who she ends up with is like her last love interest. So hopefully it's looking good for her. I love Aelin so much. She's literally the best fantasy female main character of all time. This book was just amazing. If you have not read the Throne of Thou series and you're okay with reading about a high fantasy that does not have a lot of smut in it, like as in zero, um, this is amazing series. I do think it's good for people who are very comfortable and like would enjoy picking up a YA and I just wish that I had read it earlier and every time I pick it up I'm like I do not want this story to end. Currently I'm reading Queen of Shadows and I had a whole bunch of like library books come in and just start a different book. I haven't gotten very far in Queen of Shadows but I'm so excited to continue reading the series. It never gets boring. So next I read Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood. This book I gave a four star. This was my second book that I read as part of the Steminist novellas which honestly is the best palate cleanser, the best thing to get you through like a very short period of time. So if you're on an airplane for a short time car ride, um, if you just need to kill an afternoon or you're in between very high fantasy books that are hurting your brain a little bit. These books are so good to get into. I will say like the characters are very much copies of one another so if you read one of the not even the Stumness novellas just any of her books like all the characters are pretty much the same just in different settings different hair color like stuff like that but I don't mind it. I like her the character and I mean you know. This one is about Mara Mara uh, she basically inherits this house because her mentor, I don't even think I explained what Air of Fire was about. Anyways, we're moving on. She finds out that this house already is being lived in by this man who is related to this mentor. She really needs this house, like it's really close to her job, whatever. She doesn't want to sell. This guy is a lawyer and he is a lawyer for this company who does not care too much about the environment. Mara is an environmental scientist so they don't really get along. So what ends up happening is they just have to be roommates for a while because she's refusing to sell, he's refusing to leave, he loves the house, whatever. They have really good banter and it's just a really cute story. The next book that I read is Fourth Ring by Rebecca Yaros and I obviously give it five stars because I'm human. And if you have not read this book, you've definitely been recommended it before. So I just, I don't know what you're waiting for. Like, read the book. What happens in this book is this girl named Violet Sorengale, her mother is the general of this, like, military, like, comprised of, like, dragon riders. And it's kind of, like, divergent in that you have, like, these different factions or whatever. So, like, a scribe, you can be part of the writer's quadrant. We don't really touch into the different types. We just get thrown into Violet having to pass the first test to enter the uh, writer's quadrant because she's being pressured to even though she's always wanted to be a scribe. Now she has to watch out for this character named Zayden because 
he had a lot to do with how her brother died and has a big hatred for like Violet, her family, her mom, and is going to try and kill her. So eventually Violet's trying to navigate this new world. She also has to do a lot of adapting and she needs to get all kinds of new strategies and try and think really smart to survive. We really just get to see the new Violet. We don't really see the old Violet because a lot of it's about her becoming this person who really brave and fierce. I love the dragons as well. Like we weren't just like, oh, you're in the rider's quadrant. You get a dragon, we're gonna train. You have to earn your dragon. There's a massive process to get a dragon. And I honestly, I love that aspect so much. Also, I think that the magic is really unique and it's just such an amazing story. It's just so addicting to read. So if you're in a reading slump, like, the next book I read was The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. This is again part of the Throne of Glass series. So this is the fourth book I read, but a lot of people choose to read it as the first. Having now read Air of Fire and The Assassin's Blade, I would recommend reading The Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire. It's crazy to jump that far back because you feel like you've got to know this new character and see her develop just to be brought back to like honestly what feels like a foreign character. We get to see Selena as an assassin. Something Kale will never understand is that being an assassin does require being a little violent. And so it's really just a bunch of short stories of her maybe on different missions or going to travel places or specific characters. But the reason that I would recommend reading it after Air of Fire is because Queen of Shadows is kind of expecting you to have just come from the Assassin's Blade and we're getting all these crazy throwbacks and very specific details that you may have forgotten about if you read the Assassin's Blade first. Um, it's actually really cool, especially in regards to Erevan. You need to have his story like fresh in your mind of how it like ended and his involvement in Selena being sent to this slave camp. Yeah, I just, I'm obsessed with this girl. I give it four stars instead of five stars because it was slow at points and sometimes I was just like, oh, I really want to get back to the main story instead of having to go through this. Um, but then when I went to Queen of Shadows, I was like, you know, I could have used a little more. Especially with her and Sam, there was never really like a period of like their relationship growing. It just kind of went to like, I hate you so much to like, we're going to be best friends forever. And I, I love Sam. Sam is so precious. Next, I read Stuck With You by Ellie Hazelwood. So we're flipping back to the Stemonist novellas. Stuck With You is about this environmental engineer and she works for like green frame this company that works on sustainability and in the same building as her is another engineer i think who works for this bigger company oh no he's not an engineer is he yes he is okay yeah yeah and you know they have this really cute meet cute whatever they have like a great first date and stuff then something happens where contact is cut off they hate each other and so one day she goes into her building to go to work and this guy from the other floor who works for the other company also comes into the elevator and the elevator gets stuck. Um, and just like the rest of the Stemonist novellas, you flash back from the present to the past to kind of figure out what happened and their relationship. They're super cute. Yeah, it's just like a really easy way to pass time and they're really good books. Okay, next I read Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I don't know why I thought I wanted to read this book. If you watch my video, the 20 books I want to read before I turn 20, you will know that Lord of the Flies was one of the books I listed. So when I was trying to find books that were immediately available to me on Libby to listen to, like as an audiobook, Lord of the Flies had a no wait time. And apparently I didn't see that as a red flag. And um, there's a reason for that. And that's because this is the most stupid book of all time and I hated it so much. If you have to read it in English class, I understand how it could be somewhat useful in discussions. I talked extensively about this book while I was doing my What I Read in a Week, and all I'm gonna say is I just did not enjoy it, and if you do not have to read it, just don't read it. And also, like, there's summaries online that do a really good job of summarizing it because it is such a popular book, so, like, just Please don't torture yourself if you don't have to. 
Yeah, two stars for me. Last book I read was Love on the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood, which I gave a five star because I, there was not a single part of this experience that I did not enjoy with this book. So it is about this girl whose name has left my memory, but she goes to work for NASA. She's working on a specific project where she's like making um, helmets for these astronauts. She's a neuroscientist and so she's kind of helping them along like fix these projects right because it's only been engineers working on this she's partnered with this person who she hates who she has a history with and they're forced to kind of interact and work together as they're like co-leading this whole project um but she's very much excluded from the project and she can't quite figure out why at the end of this book the weirdest things start happening and it feels like she dipped her toes into the thriller genre and not the romance genre. I was not expecting guns to be involved. Um, I was not expecting there to be an arrest. Like, I, I was shook. I was very taken aback by that experience, but it was entertaining. Yeah, those were all the books I read this summer and my TBR for the fall is so spectacular especially if you love fantasy and the books that i have started reading for the fall that i'm gonna put under the fall category are already so good also like five stars i'm just having a good reading moment and i'm not gonna ruin that so i'm just gonna keep reading fantasy it seems to be what's working i'm definitely gonna read more of throne of glass and i'm just so excited for this new season of reading Thank you so much for hanging out with me and hopefully I will see you in another vlog very soon. Bye!